Hi everybody, we're back. Welcome to day three of HP Discover. This is theCUBE, I'm Dave Vellante. theCUBE is a live mobile studio. We go out to events, we land in, we extract the signal from the noise, we broadcast you know, all day long. We've been here for three days now uh, at HP Discover. This is HP's big European event. It mirrors the event that Hewlett Packard has in Las Vegas in June. HP Discover, it's the big customer event. In fact, HP does uh, quite a bit of business in Europe, I would say, in some ways, this event has actually a little bit even more energy, believe it or not, than what you saw in Las Vegas. So, big European contingent, obviously a lot of diversity, and a lot of energy. So we're going to kick the day off today, two great guests. Shilpa Luanda is here, she's the Vice President at Vertica, uh, and Brian Weiss, VP at Autonomy, both of course HP companies. Folks, welcome to theCUBE, good to see you again. Thanks Dave, it's great thanks to be here. Thanks for having us. So Shilpa, let's start with you. Um, First of all, thanks for staying a little later. I know that uh, a lot of your colleagues are hitting the road, but we're, we're hanging tough here in theCUBE, and so thanks for hanging with us. But um, give us the, the, the quick update from your perspective. What's going on at the show for, for you and for Vertica? Uh, so it's been a great show for us. Um, uh, we announced Vertica 7 a few weeks ago, and uh, we're just starting to see um, you know, uh, people's reactions to it, and it's been just unbelievable for us. Uh, you might have seen that uh, yesterday was the, um, we had the Facebook CIO on, on stage with George Great. Garifa uh, talking about uh, what impact Vertica has had on their business. And so um, uh, it's been just a great show with lots of good customers uh, talking on our behalf, um, as well as a lot of uh, good customer interest in, uh, uh, in Vertica 7, especially uh, with FlexZone, which you know, enables us uh, to do not just structured data anymore, but also structured and, and uh, semi-structured data. And so um, it really, you know, um, uh, is a huge leap for us. Yeah, it was a great testimonial from uh, the Facebook guys. It was, a, it was quite an amazing demo. For those of you who didn't see it, it's actually worth going back and checking out the, the replay. But um, the gentleman from, from Facebook put up what we thought was a map, right? But it was the yeah. points of light yes. of all the users of Facebook and all their connections. And it essentially formed a map. And you could very clearly see the map of the world and the continents. And he said, there was no map when we put this yeah, together. Yeah, this is just, just points of light. Points of light. It, yes. was, it was pretty, uh, pretty inspiring. Yeah. Uh, now, Brian, from, from the autonomy standpoint, we, we're starting to see uh, this sort of monolithic, massive chunk of software being broken into pieces and, and, and web services created that yeah. HP is beginning to leverage across the organization. Yeah. That's got to be really e exciting, first of all, that you can actually do that with the architecture, and yeah. second of all, that it can now find that thousand points of light, you know, I guess pun intended, yeah. across the organization. So give us the quick autonomy update. Well, you know, this is one of the benefits that we have of coming into HP, because you can take the resources of a company like HP and a platform like Idle, which really understands human information, right? And it helps us get insight out of that data in a way that that you know, most sort of analytical tools can't do. But as you point out, the problem is, is that most companies have to invest in the platform, they've got to install it, et cetera. And what we've done you know, over the past year is invest heavily in making it possible now for developers to access idle on demand. So we're hosting it, and instead of having to you know, put up software and, and index data and run your applications on it, you can just ask the question. So for example, something like uh, image recognition. Uh, or sentiment analysis, for example. If I'm a coder, I can take that block of code and say, look, I'm going to forward you this image, tell me where the faces are. And I can build that right into my applications right now. So the, the, the functions inside Idle can now be exposed very quickly and easily. We've got some great examples where you know, we're building apps in a, in a, in a day, you know, based on a lot of these robust functions. Yeah, so when I look at HP's uh, software strategy, we heard George Kadifa yesterday, and he sort of laid out you know, the portfolio and, and, and the capabilities. It seems to me that the big growth area, I mean, it's pretty obvious, is the whole big data platform, yeah. you know, however you want to sort of define that. But, and that's really what Haven is all about. But there's this big white space that we talk about all the time at Silicon Analytics. There's not enough big data apps. And big data apps are hard. Uh, and why is that? Well, you need domain expertise, you need, you need data science, you need technology, you need tools to build apps. And they've been, they've been lacking, haven't they? Well, I think that's true. I think, you know, Shelp and my experience with this is that 
you know, the problems that we're really focused on in big data are the ones that are on the extremes. It's the, it's the intense amount of you know, machine generated structured data and how do you do, you can't really do that with normal relational database tools, it can't happen. Or, or um, you know, human information, what does this mean? How do you get the sentiment, how do you get the under, you know, that understanding that you and I get very easily from reading or looking at something, but the computer doesn't understand. So, you know, we live at those extremes and that's really where the most value is and we're putting a lot of effort into making a platform that you can develop. Okay. So Haven, right, let's, let's yeah. just break it down. So it stands for Hadoop, Autonomy, Vertica, Enterprise Security, and N. The N is for N apps. N apps. Right? And so then if you add Enterprise Services and uh, Enterprise Group to that, you're in heaven, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Trademark, so, here you go, so you heard it here first. Okay, so the <laughs> idea is I'm in application development heaven for some of these emerging uh, big, big data apps. Um, talk a little bit more about the Haven uh, platform, uh, Shilpa, from, just from an architectural standpoint. What, what should we know about it? Yeah, so uh, Haven basically gives you all the building blocks you need to essentially analyze all of your information. So it's not just structured data or, or uh, human information, but it gives you the tools to really put them together. So to give you an example, let's say you're a telco uh, and you're trying to find out which are the customers that matter to you, right? So there's a lot of information you can collect from your, you know, your call detail records and so on. And a lot of that is structured or semi-structured information. Vertica can do great with that. Um, and we a have, you know, I would say seven out of you know, 10 telcos in the US are our customers. Uh, so now what if you have uh, call, deep, call logs from your call center and you want to basically find out what are people, people really talking about uh, about your products when they call your customer support? Like are they happy or are they experiencing dropped calls and things yeah. like that? That's sentiment that you need, that's human information. When yeah. people call you, like you want to identify things like what was the inflection of this person's voice? Yeah. Uh, what, was, what were the, you know, the words they dropped? Or you know, are they happy customers? Um, you really want to focus on your unhappy customers and yeah. those are the people you want to send yeah. promotions and so on. So this churn analysis is a major problem for telcos. And that's, and that's, and that's and not so, a Vertica sweet and that's spot. Not that's not a Vertica only solution. solution. It's, it's a common, so it's, yeah, you yeah. need to put you know, the human data together with the machine data here. Uh, to really get you that extra insight. And that, these, are, be, these uh, this processing all of your information is I think what's going to be the edge. Uh, once everybody starts doing big data, then what keeps one company different from another one? Yeah. It's what you can do with yeah. all the data. I mean the point is to be able to get insight, right? Insight out of information, and be able to do that, you have to be able to understand it in human terms and be able to handle a massive volume. So it's great to know that you've got, you know, you get a 10 million calls between 10 and 11 o'clock and you've got a lot of data points about every phone call, but were they mad? What do they talk about? Like you can't get that data point without understanding and analyzing the actual call itself. And of course we can't listen to these calls. The computer has to do it for us. So if I were a head of application development at a telco, let's say pre-Haven, uh, and I wanted to solve this, this problem, I got relational databases, I maybe have some column stores, uh, I maybe have some way to analyze unstructured data. How would I go about actually building those apps and how would Haven change my world? Yeah, so, uh, so previously, I mean, I think this is the kind of app that I don't think people normally do today. Yeah, you, right? you, this it's too hard, like, they just say, it's oh, too hard. This is like, imagine if we you could don't do even that. know it's possible. Right. <laughs> you know, Wouldn't yeah. it be great if So we essentially could they do would do it, it in silos, and they then might try do it in silos, to yeah. put the information together and squint yeah. through it and yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you might be able to find, you know, like you might be able to do some analysis on your call center um, logs to find, you know, how many customers are calling or something like that. But that's metadata, right? Yeah. That's not leveraging the data in your human information, right? So now, uh, on the other hand, you know, Vertica can do a lot of analysis on the machine data, on the call logs, and on the on the on the call detail records type of analysis. Uh, but that doesn't again give you the human, you know. So the, the combination is, I don't, I think those are the uh, applications that so far haven't been built. Yep. And that's what Haven gives you. And, right? and look it's in like, that equation, what Idle Autonomy's technology doing is telling you the ideas that are in that phone call. What did you and I talk about? It's telling me the main concepts, it's telling me the things that are related to them, and it's telling me whether I was mad or not in fairly subtle details. And there's a lot of data points that come out of that. And so now I can use those two together and build an analytical app that says, these guys are mad about this topic and this particular geography, and most of them are getting drop calls here. Those sort of things are now visible immediately. So, so Haven is an out of the box platform. It comes with a Hadoop distribution of my choice, is that right? Or maybe it's Apache, right, Hadoop. And then I get Vertica, I get Autonomy, I get my security 
piece, and then I get development tools? No, so the, the, the metadata is about headers, the Lego blocks that interplay with each other. Yep. Right? So we don't want to make one uh, sort of monolithic um, distribution that you have to like get, a, get all of it, even if you don't need all of them. Okay. Right. So our focus is really, you know, f look at your use case and figure out, you know, which blocks do you want to use to build. Uh, so, for example, you know, there's another example could be, uh, you know, Vertica and uh, an Arc site together for a mm -hmm. security analytics application. Um, you know, so you might have, uh, you might just buy those two components if you need those are the only two. Okay, so Vertica and Hadoop is another combination that's very common. So what I'm trying to get to is, 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 is technically, or maybe not even so much technically, but, but the, what do those building blocks give me? It's from in terms of developer productivity that I wouldn't have otherwise. That, in other words, they, they, they work yes. together. What does that mean? You know, uh, architecturally so, or technically yeah, so and then gives, ultimately productivity So essentially, wise. you know, uh, gives you APIs, right? So okay. it gives you APIs uh, as well as it gives you sort of, um, you know, um, think of it as reference implementation. So we, you know, we have the developer portal as examples of how you would put these two things together. Uh, what are the APIs you would use uh, to put these things together? Okay. So, so the other thing you get, David, is, is, is connectivity. Right, so in order to be able to get the data, whether it's human information or structured data or logs coming off of your, your arc site, for example, um, you need to have, a, you have to have connectors. Right. So we have connectors with, from all the libraries, whether they come from autonomy or arc site, that actually allow you to get to that. In fact, when you're using Hadoop, you're using, what, in this framework, you can be using the, the autonomy extraction to be able to put the data into it. So the, the, in fact, the ETL process itself uses the toolkits that we have. Um, it's everything from the attraction, everything from the connectors to the extraction to what you do with that data. Okay. And I think to your point, the idea is people are coming and saying, start with the use case. What kind of data do you have and what would you love to get out of it? So for example, in the security use case, you've got Vertica, which is handling all those massive logs, right? All the events. But then we also take idle and we couple that on top of it and say, if there's any human information in this event, what's it about? So I can track the fact that at five o'clock I sent a document out of the environment that's in the log. Here's the question for you. What was the document about and do I care? Was that sensitive IP or was it just a recipe or was I sending a photo to Shelpa of my kids? Yeah. Now Idle can come in and say I can enrich that insight into what's going on in your environment, not just what happened, what did it mean? And so that toolkit's available now and we can actually couple both idle and arc side together and deliver it out to the field. Okay, so I can spend, have my developers spend, spend time uh, focusing on uh, whether it's I implementing the policy or driving That's revenue right. or whatever it is and not have to worry about the integration. The plumbing, yeah. You so don't you're essentially giving me programmable software infrastructure That's right. Mm -hmm. that right, right out of the, I called it out of the box, but <laughs> it's not yes. coming well, it's in the box, ready, but yeah. yeah. Um, okay, great, that's good. Now let's go through s some examples. You guys have uh, announced the digital marketing hub. Yeah. Um, uh, that's one example. Let's go through some. Brian. Yeah, well, so um, we can talk about the digital marketing hub. This is a, um, a framework which it's, a, it's hosted as a service that we can provide, and, it's, and it allows marketers to take multiple different data points about their customer, right? It might come from their, um, from their call center, it might come from their, uh, their customer databases, it might come from their marketing platforms, or whatever it might be, multiple different touch points, and aggregate that information, and allow you to run campaigns in real time. So, historically, what you'd have to do with marketing is get information from you know, my various applications, whether it's Adobe or Marketo or wherever it might be, and find out where the customer's touching, what are we doing, how is our campaign working, and you have to come back and analyze it, and then you have to come back and adjust the campaign, and then you have to see if that one's working. So there's long hang time to be able to sort of test and analyze and discover whether you spent money in the right place. Well, now all that information is aggregated in one view, and we can actually then take it and drive what you're learning about your customers in real time into the campaign itself directly. So I can get campaigns to launch automatically based on dynamic segmentation of my customer base now. Okay. And by so the way, this, this runs on idle and Vertica is on the back end of it. So this is a Haven based application that we at HP have delivered. So it's to the built market. on Haven, Haven's the platform. Mm -hmm. Digital Marketing Hub is the, the sort of application that you've, That's right. you've built and, yeah. it's, and, and it supports other applications like Marketo, you mentioned Adobe. Well see, th those are data sources, yeah, okay. right? So I know a lot about my customer based on any number of different applications which tell me, you, my call center for example, right? My touch points to you, but normally those are separated. And in order to figure out what I want to sell to and who my segment is and how I'm going to campaign to them, I, I usually need to do a manual aggregation of it. Uh, okay. And now I can do that in real time. And how would people do it 
you know, prior to Digital Marketing Hub. They do it in... Well, you'd collect all this and then you'd sit down and put some spreadsheets together and you say, you know what, that campaign didn't work very well. We probably didn't target it to the right people and here's what we know about these. It's a very manual exercise. So it's Excel hell and pivot tables and, yeah. and the and like. You know, this is the thing that, that's really interesting and is um, this concept of connected intelligence. People always talk about, I want to get value of my data, I want to get insight out of my data. What we're also seeing people focus on is, I want to get value out of different data types. I want to see across this one, this one, this one, and this one, and not, and the big, big data is not just about going deep on one particular type of data. It's what you get when you go across all of them as an insight. Yes. And that, that's, that, you know, Yeah, it's, it's, it's eliminating silos, right? So, yeah. uh, so another example is the, uh, is the operations analytics it's product. Great example. It's a great example of uh, a use of, uh, you know, different, different log analysis technology that we have in different products in HP. Um, but Vertica is the one, the engine that provides that analytics, so the data goes into Vertica. Uh, but what, what that allows you to do things like take your network operations data together with your security data and do correlations across those two domains, right. that even in an IT organization, sometimes those data is owned by different parts of that organization. So they tend to be in silos. Yep. If you put the two things together, then you can actually almost think of that data as an addition to your business data. Right, because you might find interesting correlations that you might not find just with your data warehouse, that you mm -hmm. like, why did I get a spike in sales here? Or if you're a network operator, like why did, why did I suddenly get uh, this, this spike in my network? Like I have no idea what, what was the problem. Did I do something wrong? Um, and you might find that, oh, people just you know, bought more of my product because it was raining outside. Yeah. And so they just came in and drove <laughs> right. and bought, you know, hamburgers or something like that. <laughs> and so, right. but unless you have the business, the sure. data warehouse or whatever is your business sales data correlated with your network data, you would never know, right? Yeah. So, so th these are problems that sort of cross domains, across mm -hmm. the business data, machine data, uh, and then if you add human data to it, that's when you get insights that are competitively, um, yeah. you know, valuable. So I heard at least two use cases there. One, one was more sort of what's happening with my sales. The other was what's happening with my IT infrastructure. So yeah. is, are those common use cases that you expect or things that you've talked to customers about? Let's take the latter. Yeah, so um, I'll give you another example. Uh, so um, think about, you know, you're doing, Security is a problem for you know everybody. Uh, the CI, uh, all CSOs are thinking about you know how to keep my enterprise secure. Uh, but there are these threats that really require. So your your you know your your security software will handle things that are events that happen in a short period of time. But then there might be behaviors you need to identify over, over long periods of time. So for yep. example, uh, Shilpa is an engineer and she you know logs into these systems. But one fine day, Shilpa logged into a sales system, right? that behavior you can only identify myself as an identity over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were able to you know, correlate my, my activities and establish an identity for me and associate it with my behavior, that type of analysis requires an engine like Vertica, yep. right? So because you you, your SIM products wouldn't do that because that's not what they're meant for. Yep. And so these are the kinds of things that, um, that you can do by putting you know, the power of Haven. You were mentioning machine uh, data before, so we've been doing a lot of work in SiliconANGLE Wikibon on the whole, what, whether you call it Internet of Things, and we did this big piece of work with, uh, with GE recently on the industrial internet. John Furrier hosted a panel with Jeffrey M. Elf. It was really interesting to hear folks from you know, transportation, airlines, oil and gas, just talk about the, the types of data that's being generated by machines. And of course, you start thinking about, well, where's that data going to go? How's it going to be analyzed? What kind of conversations are you having with customers in that regard? Are you having them at this point in time? And, and what, are they, what are they asking you about? And how do you see HP participating in that yeah. whole trend? So, uh, so as you know, we recently uh, announced FlexZone, which is Vertica's ability to ingest semi-structured data. Right. Uh, what we find is a lot of this data, sensor data, machine data, things like that, uh, even though people think of it as unstructured, there's a lot of structure in that data. It's semi-structured, and we find that uh, you know, have, making it possible for people to easily uh, ingest and, and analyze that data is a huge leap uh, yeah. for a lot of people because you know this data stays dark. Um, you know, a lot of there's there's a lot of this data that just people throw away. Like yep. there's incredible amount of, of of machine log data that people throw away because there's you know they yeah. don't know what to do with it, or they might keep it for some period of time just for troubleshooting or something. Uh, but it's the long-term retention and being able to find insights and, and over remember, time a lot and of across that, many people. A, know, a lot of that data is deadly is. boring. Like you're going to have, you know, billion clicks and whatever these machines are doing. 
and you care about the, the billionth and one that, that's a little bit different. Yeah, right. But you've got to keep the other ones in order to be able to understand the difference. And so you're, you're collecting a lot of noise in order to be able to get that little bit of signal. And you know, normal relational technologies don't, just can't handle the volume. Yeah, think it's we'll not, they're not the right job, right so, for the job. So what's the potential of that space? Is, it, is the potential there to really start to, to take waste out of, uh, out of <coughs> industries? Um, whether yes. it's to... The speed to insight. Yeah. Okay, speed to insight, but but so you, like like you said, Brian. Yes, you take the data exhaust. You take the data exhaust, exhaust like out of all, all these machines. All. But as and you point out, there's so use, much. Yeah, use that to find trends that are like across populations and things like that, right? Which is not something that you know. It's like your you know your refrigerator, the next generation of it would have, you know, four eight hundred sensors yeah. that'll tell GE or whoever the company that yep. makes them all about like what what is this person's usage pattern. And, and you know what is and that if you can correlate that with that energy use, then there's just so much. Um, so if you think about it, you know I would say the next uh, sort of frontier for analytics would be like data products that are really built using analytics, right? Yeah. So it's not just about understanding your own business or your own customers. That's yeah. that's the Web 2.0 well, model, so right? Understand your customers, but like make your products like collect analytics about themselves, mm -hmm. and then use that to improve the product experience for your customer. That's like, I think, the next level of where you're seeing you know, the internet of things and all that. I'll tell you, I think that customers out there are starting to understand that, and, and really realize that you can get a computer to understand human information. And normally, I think that's, a, that's an outside of the box idea for people. The idea that I can have a computer listen to this conversation, actually listen to all of the conversations in the room, to a computer, okay, we can have machines tell me what people are talking about things that you would ordinarily need people to do. Like look, if, I, if I'm, for example, if you're a lawyer and you got to find relevant documents for a case, the judge does not say, find me the one with the word bridge in it. He says, find me the relevant documents. Now, you can pay people to do that, or you can ask a machine to say, by the way, read all of these and tell me the main ideas, or listen to all these phone calls and tell me what's in them. And that's where we get into sentiment analysis, social analysis, really valuable for customers like NASCAR, right? All that data is coming in, there's the tweets and how fast they're coming in and when they're happening, what are people saying? Yeah, so this is what I, what I wanted to get to is, is you mentioned it, Brian, there's so much of this information is deadly boring, so, and it's just su such a huge volume, a, a human just can't sift through that, no nope. way. So what you're putting forth is a vision where machines start making decisions based on maybe human injected policies, yep. you know, um, and maybe a human's watching to make sure something's not going wrong, but the, the machines are actually affecting whether it's the utilization of a turbine or or what gets packed on 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 on, on which you know freighter or whatever it is yep. to increase utilization um, so what happens to the humans you know there's the old bromide you can't take humans out of the equation humans are the last mile do humans just do more productive things yes. what do you guys envision there well two things I'll say and uh, th there's there's automation so to your point the computer can actually do things and make decisions Say for example, um, you see this in fraud detection all the time, right? Yeah. If whether whether it's something I've written or something I've done, if it if it triggers a fraud alert, I can block it, right? And the funny thing about, for example, insider trading, when people are going to do that and they're going to write an email about insider trading, they don't use the phrase insider trading, right? They say something else, and so you have to analyze the subtlety of that, but also you can block that. Or the other one is in security, okay? Video. If you're analyzing video, and maybe we, we have our technology doing this in the field um, from drones, what's important and what's not? You've got thousands and thousands of hours of noise, but the analyst needs to see the one event which matters. And they cannot sit there and watch thousands. They need the, the truck-shaped object is going to a place where it's not. So you're right, it'll, give you, it'll make you more efficient, and it'll bring the signal out of the noise so you can either automate a process or be in, you know, much more valuable and efficient with your time. Yeah, it's, uh, insider trading example is interesting. Yeah. I was just reading an article, I forget what, uh, what magazine it was in recently, and they were just saying that, that, that they're not saying, you know, I'm doing some insider trading. They're talking <laughs> no, about, of course you know, takeout, you know, That's exactly uh, I, right. I want Thai food today, or whatever it is. And, and when they see that pattern occur, you know, some anomaly about talking about food. That's right in a consistent pattern and then they identify it with another person and then, then that's how they're identifying that's right. <laughs> that's right. tr trading fraud, that's which right. is fascinating. There's no way a human would ever be able to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll give you another example of like, you know, that impacts like me, you know, this device I'm wearing, Fitbit, right? Yeah. 
This is where analytics touches me personally, right? Like I, I, I walk extra just to get the five dots <laughs> at the end of the day, every day. Like, and it's because it tells me like, hey, one. you only really have a thousand more, you know, like steps to go and then you'll do it, right? And so just think of the impact that these devices can have on, on people individually, not just like, you know, people understanding, okay, you know what? People socially together, you know, uh, if you just tell people a little more data, um, I think I think uh, we all become you know our lives get better. We were at um, uh, I'll tell you a quick story. We were at a Hadoop Summit in June, and we were interviewing uh, I forget his last name Sky something. I remember his first name. His first name was Sky, and that actually was his. He's given, out there somewhere. That was his given name. So he's a, he was an <laughs> Olympic athlete, a velodrome athlete, and he was very upset, of course, with all the doping that was going on, and mm -hmm. and you know he was a clean athlete, and he worked with. Uh, I think it was maybe Datamir or something, I can't remember the company, to, to use the data from a Fitbit to try to identify temperatures when he's sleeping, uh, yeah. you know, food intake, calories, and everything else. And they were able to dramatically increase performance yes. through data. Yep. Yes. So that's a fascinating example. Right? The other day I was at a Christmas event and I was talking just, uh, you know, talking to somebody and they, um, they're a researcher uh, in education. And one of the interesting examples they, uh, they were looking at is if you give uh, a child or a student, uh, let's say a high school student, information about, uh, you ask them a simple question at the end of a test saying, what resources did you use uh, in filling out these answers, right? And then you do a survey across all the students and give the students back analytics that show that if they used all their, so for example, did they ask their parents questions? Did they go use the internet? Did they use Google? Did they use Wikipedia? Like, what resources did they use? And so if you can show them a positive correlation between the resources they used and their scores on the test, the students apparently go look for more resources. <laughs> yeah. So even yeah. like children yeah. will make use of analytics <laughs> if you give them to it without, they won't even know that it's analytics, yeah. but that's the power of data, yeah. right? Well, I, I also think, you know, there's a, uh, there's a great example from, uh, from the CIO of Facebook. And, and you know, Shilpa and I were just talking about this before we came in here is, you know, what they're doing there, and you can tell us a little more about it, but they, uh, the fact that they can get live, almost real-time information about who's buying what and where, when it ordinarily took them a day, the really interesting point he's made is like, we can build a whole different class of applications now because in real time I know what's happening. So they're going to be able to go back in and deliver, because of the speed of the insight, a whole different class of applications at Facebook because of that. If you have to operate in a batch, right. wait a day to get an answer, I can't build an application that's going to react to that and give you a different price or give you a different offer or optimize my marketing. I can't do that. And the exponential factor there, as he said, was the relationships. Yeah. Yes. Right? Because it's not just an individual, you can end up begin but to the, market to but an individual social graph. The speed yes. of what yeah. they can do with that, and, and yeah. that, that was, I mean, I, that's going to make a whole different class and a whole universe of applications. So it's early days, uh, obviously, you guys are really, this is sort of, just getting started here. I mean, you announced Haven. Now you're you know, starting to, you know, improve the platform. What do you guys expect that we should be watching, uh, Brian? We'll start with you. Just as observers, what should we be observing as the uptake in this market? Uh, what are they going to be the the key parameters and indicators that we're really starting to take off and and see momentum here? Um, well, I, I think you're going to see very rapidly extremely high value use cases coming out publicly. I mean, the Facebook one's a good example, yeah. but places where we're you know, providing insights that, that traditional technologies couldn't do. Whether it's um, you know, coupling an insight into the data with the security event itself. And so you'll start to see those kinds of uses come out of our customer, they're, they're digging into them right now, um, around more and harder difficult types of information to understand audio and video. So I, you will start to see those come out and I think there will be some that are mind blowing. Mm. Um, and, and you know, that uptake is, uh, it's, it's happening faster Problems than I would have expected. Problems that you really wouldn't even think about solving that's before because it was too hard. Exactly, that's what you're going after. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Anything think, you'd add to that? Yeah, so the far? second thing I think you, that you'll see and you're already seeing in this uh, conference a lot is uh, partner activity. Yeah. So part, we've seen an unbelievable response to, uh, from, you know, from our yeah. strategic partners, our service, uh, uh, our service partners, our, our, our resellers, technology partners, and, and really the whole ecosystem. Uh, around uh, around Haven, and so you know, between the developers and the and the partners, I think we you know we really believe that we have something here. No it's other company has that whole gamut of uh, you know of tools to handle really all the data. Yeah, and it's nice to see the uptake by developers as well. So 
you know, we introduced idle demand, on demand we've got Haven developer tools, the uptake by the folks who want to build applications based on this level of insight is really high. Yeah, you've announced an SDK, right? Absolutely. Um, so, big opportunity for HP, obviously, in the software group uh, is, is to go after the developers. We talked to uh, Robert Young Johns about the potential of having a developer conference, really excited about that. So, anyway, congratulations for being in the hottest space in the company. Hey. You must be really excited about that. And it's a pleasure for us to be sort of watching that progress. So, Shilpa and Brian, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. My pleasure, David. All right, keep it Thank right there, everybody. We'll be back with John Furrier with our next guest right after this. This is theCUBE, we're live from HP Discover Barcelona.